In this module, we're going to look at the rules on which countries can participate in Horizon 2020. Now, in the course, this was Annex 2 of the notes. So if you look at the, the, the handout I gave you uh, during the notes, you'll see, uh, you'll see all the slides that I presented here. Now, before I describe the countries that can participate, we have to look at the, the terminology and the language that's used uh, to categorize countries. Now, a member state is a member of the European Union. A third country is a European terminology for a country that's not a member of the European Union. So, for example, America and Canada are third countries. An associated country is a country that puts funding into Horizon 2020. Take, for example, Norway puts money in, Iceland puts money in, you know, and these countries participate as if they're part of the European Union. Now, when you're putting a consortium together, normally you need a minimum, a, a minimum of three partners from the member states or the associated countries. Now, they, they divide the third countries into different categories. The main two categories are countries that can receive funding and countries that cannot receive funding. So what I want to look at here is the list of countries that can receive funding. And then I'll also say a few words about countries like America, Australia, uh, China that, that can participate, but where they bring their own funding. Now, an international organization is an organization that is uh, part of international agreements. For example, the World Health Organization and CERN are both based in Geneva, but they are not Swiss partners. So I'll just go through uh, the, that particular list. Now, the European Commission itself has seven research institutes called the Joint Research Centers, and they can participate, they can receive funding, but they're not classified as a German or Irish partner, they're classified as a category called the GRC. Now, in case anybody forgets, these are the 28 countries, and they participate, they put money in through their normal payment system, and they're perfectly eligible to, to, to participate in all aspects of the program. Now, associated countries are divided into two categories, candidate states. These are countries that are applying for membership. Now, Iceland is um, officially a candidate state, but the, its, its negotiation has paused for a while. Turkey applied in many years ago. Serbia, Macedonia, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Montenegro. All of these countries... Albania participates in exactly the same way as Germany, Ireland, or France. Norway puts money in, Liechtenstein, Israel, Faroe. Now, there is one exception here. It's Switzerland. Uh, at, at this moment, Switzerland uh, has not signed the association agreement. But as the time of preparing this presentation, they are allowed to participate in Pillar 1, which is ERC and Marie Curie and FET. But if you're looking at Switzerland as a partner, you have to double check the status at, at the time of, of submitting. Now, just to clarify Switzerland, a Swiss partner can participate in a European project. However, in Pillar 2 and Pillar 3, they have to get the funding from Switzerland. But in the case of ERC, they can receive funding in the case of ERC. The Joint Research Centre is made up of these seven institutes, and they're located in Belgium, Gael, Germany, Karlsruhe, Italy, Ispra, Netherlands, Petten, and in Spain, in Seville. So just to summarize, they can participate in projects, and they can receive funding, like any other partner. Examples of international partners are the World Health Organization, based in Geneva, FAO, based in Rome. Now, the European University in Florence is not an Italian university. It's actually part of the European institutions, the same as Maastricht and Bruce. So in theory, somebody from Italy could go on a Marie Curie fellowship to Florence, the EUI, because it's not an Italian university. Now, on the following slide, there's a special group of organizations that are classified as international organizations. These are organizations that are funded by many countries, for example, certain European Space Agency, ESO, MBL. Um, so they can participate, but they're not classified. For example, EMBL is based in Heidelberg, but it's not classified as a German partner. It's classified as an international organization. 
Now, when you're dealing with international countries like America, China, India, Vietnam, or whatever, these are examples of international agreements that Europe has signed, you know, dealing with the human rights, uh, biological diversity, and so on. And, and Europe likes participating with international partners on subjects related to these international agreements. So if you're putting in a proposal on climate change or on children's rights or, or whatever, it's very important to find out, is there an, in, an international agreement related to this uh, particular area? Now, eligible third countries are defined in the general annex of Horizon 2020. So if you go into uh, Annex A of the general annexes, they actually list every single country that is eligible for funding. And these can normally divide, be categorized as developing countries in Africa, Asia, Latin America. Uh, South Africa is classified as an emerging economy, but it, it can receive funding. Mediterranean countries and places like Armenia, Ukraine, and so on. All of these countries can participate and they can receive funding. What about countries like America, Australia, Canada? Before I describe their status, um, you must be aware that the European Union has signed scientific cooperation agreements with 19 countries. So there's a scientific cooperation agreement between Europe and Australia, Europe and USA. And in these areas, Europe likes to have joint research on things like security, climate change, human rights, and so on. So if you're doing a project that involves any of these countries, it's a good idea to check out the, um, the scientific cooperation agreement, which you see at the, at the top of, of this slide. Now, let's take America as a case study. Can an American or research center or company participate in Horizon 2020? And the answer is yes. They can participate, but the general rule is that they bring their own funding. Now, there are some exceptions. If you can prove that the research cannot be done by a European organization, then you can justify that the American partner should get funding. Or if there's a bilateral agreement between Europe and America, for example, in the case of the health program, the National Health Program in America is open to European researchers. So the health program in Horizon 2020 is open to American researchers. So American research centers can participate in the health program and they can receive funding. But a Chinese partner can participate in the health program, but they don't get funding. So there are individual rules like that. Now, in the case of uh, Microsoft Germany, Microsoft Germany is based in Aachen. And they're classified as a German partner. Intel Ireland is based in Ireland and they're classified as an Irish partner. So if you have an international Organize a company or research center based in a member state or an associated state of the European Union, then they're classified as, as European partners and they just participate uh, like any other university in, in, in Europe. So that was the end of the rules. And if you want to see the exact rules relating to companies, it's defined in the, in the rules of participation and in Annex A of the General Annex which you find on the participant portal. So thank you very much. And in the, in the next module, we, we look at the implementation part of the proposal. So thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you.